Hey, and everybody will mute while she chats. That'd be great, including you, Mr. Vivek. And you, you got some, uh, you know, when you get you a headset, they're called headsets. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll do that. There. <laughs> throwing it out there. So, are you recording? I mean, are we good? Or? She's recording. Awesome. So, um, I am Geeta Soso, and um, today we're going to talk about how to use Microsoft Flow to enable role based security in your Power App. Myself, I am a custom app dev and collaboration consultant with Artist Consulting. I'm based out of Dallas, Texas, and I am an enthusiast of all things Office 365, SharePoint, Power Platform. Azure Stack and IoT. I'm an active blogger and tweeter. You can find my blog posts at swaghub.wordpress.com. Um, so you can follow me on Twitter and also connect with me on LinkedIn. Take a quick look at the agenda for today. So I'm going to quickly talk about what is role-based security, why and where it actually makes sense to implement that in your apps, followed by a quick walkthrough of the setup um, of setting up uh, a SharePoint user group and, and how the Power Apps and Flow are configured to actually enable role-based security in your apps. And then we will quickly do a demo with a sample app. And then lastly, we'll take a look at useful resources. So first, what is role-based security? It is an approach to restrict access based on the roles of individual users or even groups within your organization. So first, you will have to come up with specific rules that you want to apply for users logging into your apps. It could be even groups of users, and you could be trying to restrict um, parts of the app or screens or maybe certain functionality features or even controls within the app. And you can make your rules as restrict restrictive or as loose as you want it to be. For example, let's say I have a service requests power app, and, um, and on the landing screen of that app, I would like to show buttons or navigation menu for all the users to be able to um, navigate to the different parts of the app. But when an app and logs in, I would want to show them as special buttons so they, so I can make the app aware that the user logging in is an admin and kind of show a different navigation scheme for, for the admin. And um, also, you would want all the user validation in a sense for your app to know if is this user who's logged in, is that user authorized? to even access parts of the app, you want that to happen automatically in real time as soon as we access the app. And we'll take a look at how that's done when we walk through our demo. And what are the benefits of actually enabling role-based security in your apps? Number one is, yes, you are ensuring your users or certain groups of users only have access to what they need. It could be data source or maybe even features or functionality or even screens within your app and nothing more than that. And in the process, you are actually denying calls to data sources or services and all that traffic that you're avoiding at the point of entry into your app, you're actually gaining back a lot of performance improvements as well. But it's time for the demo. And for that, I'm going to quickly walk you through how I have a SharePoint user group. I have a SharePoint user group for request admins, and I am part of the user group. And this is the user group that I'm going to be using to determine if the user logging into my app should be seeing certain parts of the app or not. And um, let's take a look at the app itself. So this is my landing screen for the app. And I have uh, buttons to create new and to look at my recent requests. And uh, any user that logs in should be able to access all of these buttons. but. There is a special button for an admin center, which will take them to an admin dashboard, and that should only be visible to users who are part of that request admins SharePoint security group. So let's take a look at what I have uh, set up for the screen right here, the splash screen, and I have the following setup for the on visible property of that screen. All I'm doing is just uh, setting up a global variable and setting that to be false as the default. And then um, I am making a call to flow by passing in a user function, uh, which in turn returns the email ID of the current user logged in. And then whatever results I get back from flow, I'm actually storing that um, and updating my global variable as admin. So it looks pretty straightforward there. 
um, let's take a look at this button and the visibility of that button is set to that global variable with that and so if it is true it's going to be visible if not it will not be visible so i'm going to quickly uh, take a look at our flow so it's not a massive flow it's pretty simple we have a couple of uh, it has it has a power app space trigger and that's what we look at and, uh, are others able to see what she's sharing i was going to get ready to jump in because i just see demo yeah on the powerpoint slide <laughs> oh yeah. sorry about that because I, I i was like she's moving her mouse but i can't see it like yeah oh, okay uh let me um so, I don't know if you shared the screen or if you shared. Yeah, I probably screen. clicked on the wrong one. Well, thanks for letting me know. Let me let me try this again. Um, all right. Is that better? Yep. I mean, we are seeing we are seeing the people in groups SharePoint. Oh, okay. So I'll just go through that process again because I'm sure it doesn't really quite catch what I was talking about. So this is my SharePoint group. Uh, this is the group that I'm going to be using to determine if a user is an admin or not. So I am part of this group, which means I am an admin. So when I log into the app, I should be seeing certain features and controls within the app. Um, so I'm going to open up the app that I have. And here is the splash screen for the app. We have a uh, create new and my request button. And this is a service requests app where users can go in and create their service maintenance requests, and then admin can come in and, and um, do their administrative tasks. Um, as a user, a regular user logging in, I would want them to be able to see all of these buttons, except for that little orange button at the top, which should only be visible to an admin, because that's what's going to allow the admin to go through a different navigation path and you know, look at the admin center and dashboard and perform administrative tasks. Um, so let's take a look at how I have the on visible property of the screen setup. It's uh, not a lot. All we're doing here is just setting up a global variable and setting the default to be false, which is pretty much saying when the app actually, when the screen loads at that point in time, you're not an admin. And then right after that, um, we're trying to get the user group membership information. And for that, this is a flow that I have, which we will take a look at as well. And uh, I only pass in one parameter, which is the email ID of the current user that's logged in. And then whatever results I get back from that flow call, I am actually updating the global variable. So I have a way to know if this admin is, if this user who's logged in is an admin or not. So let's take a look at this button right here. So this is the button that I'm trying to security trim based on who's logged into the app. And um, so here I have the visible property set to that global variable that I had. So this would only be visible if the value returned back from the flow is true. And if not, it would, it would be um, hidden. Let's take a quick look at the flow as well. <clears throat> so this is a Power App Space trigger flow. So, um, and you know, we looked at the uh, email parameter being passed in um, and that's what so we will be able to read through when um, we kick off the flow. And uh, we have a couple of uh, admin uh, variables getting initialized. And all this is just a Boolean variable. And then I have another variable to actually capture the group information. Now, this is a SharePoint HTTP request action. And uh, this is a standard um, uh, action. It's part of the standard connector for SharePoint. And you would use this action if you do not have a way to accomplish um, um, tasks or actions that are available out of the box with the SharePoint connector. So for example, I do not have a way to check if a user is part of a user group or not natively um, as part of the available actions in the SharePoint connector. So I'm using a SharePoint HTTP request. I have my site address specified here. I'm doing a get because I want to pass in the user's email and just get back the information that uh, the HTTP request is going to return. And, and um, this request, the important part, two parts in this request are the actual group name. So that is the name of the SharePoint group that I created. And I'm passing in a filter to, uh, with just the email ID that I passed into the flow from Power Apps. And then right after that, once that 
gets fired, I try to... Just a question, that HTTP request here, that's not P2 license, right? No, no. So luckily for us, those are part of that. That's a free connector. It's not part of the... It doesn't get affected by the... Yeah, license. so yeah. I mean, if, if, and I want to confirm that, so okay. Yeah, good question, thanks. And so the results of this action, the body that gets that uh, output body that you get back from the SharePoint HTTP request will have a, a JSON uh, object with all the user information, like the user claims ID and, and all the, the user email ID and everything that's related to a user from an office, from a SharePoint perspective, if they do have access to the group. If they do not have access to the group, then the, the result output body for that action will just have a blank object. So, and that's what I'm trying to get here. Um, um, I'm just trying to get what the results are. Um, you don't have to really do it this way. You could just use the compose action and, um, you know, just manipulate what you want to see for that data. I put in a condition just so you have granular visibility to how this actually gets processed. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to check if that uh, result set that I get back is blank or not. If it is blank, then that means I am not, uh, the user who's logged in is not an administrator, and if it does have uh, user information that gets returned back, then it means the user is an administrator. And then the very last step is just to return back what we just uh, derived from the Shepard HTTP request call. So I'm just passing in a string value of whether it was true or false, and that's what the Power App is going to use to hide and show the controls. Um, so let's, uh, now I am part of the, uh, I'm part of the request admins uh, uh, SharePoint group. So if I am going to load my app at the top for the login as um, the admin center, yeah, there it is. So what happened right now? As soon as I, as soon as I access the app on visible of that app screen, it actually made a call to Flow. It did a call through the SharePoint HTTP request to check if the user, which is me, logged in, is that user part of that request admin SharePoint group or not? And then it returned back a true or false value, and that's what's being used to determine if this button needs to be shown. Um, we'll take a look at the actual flow itself, just the run history for that flow, so we know, um, uh, we can take a look in detail what was returned and what was sent. So we have that. Um, so that was the email ID that was sent, an encoded email ID. And um, here is the SharePoint HTTP request that was sent. So you can see that it's sent in a, um, the SharePoint group name, and then it's filtering by the email ID, and then it has a status code of 200, which tells us that it ran just fine. So that's a success status code. And here are the results that we're seeing. So because I am part of the user group, I do get back a JSON object with all the user information. So you'll notice that I have my, my ID, my login name, and email ID, and all sorts of user info that, uh, that it returns back as part of uh, the check for user group membership. Um, and then finally, it's just returning back the result saying that it is true. Uh, I'm going to take myself out of the user group just to um, See what happens, and we'll take a look at what result sets we see from that HTTP request to flow in a bit. And then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and refresh my screen. So, I really am not part of the group right now, so I should not see that uh, orange button show up. So, I don't see it show up because at, right now the app is aware that I am not an admin. Um, we'll take a look at the most recent flow run. There it is. And if we look at the results for that call, we will notice that it is blank. So that's our way to know if the user is part of the group or not. And um, I think that is all for the on the demo side of things. Anybody have any questions or comments? Were you were you used listed as the admin? Is that just a list? That is a SharePoint security group. So if you go to your ship, if you go to your uh, Office 365 tenant and under site settings and under groups, you can create a group and add users to it. But, Any admins can do yeah. that? Yeah. Yes, you have to be an owner on the site or a site collection admin to do that. 
but um, you could use SharePoint lists as well. So in that case, you would just access the list and see if the user uh, exists in that list and, and stick it into your apps. You could do that as well. But uh, using the SharePoint groups is a more recommended way because that way you have uh, control over um, accessing, um, granting access and taking privileges out. Neil has a question on um, not an Azure AD security group, right? This is not an Azure AD security group, but you could add an Azure AD security group as part of this SharePoint group as well. But if you do that, um, the approach that we took to check user membership will not work. So there is another workaround to uh, actually determine if you are part of an Azure AD security group that's part of a SharePoint security group. Does that make sense? I'm trying to unmute myself. I think it worked. Yeah, OK. So, so it's checking the list in the SharePoint group to see if the name matches rather than doing a membership test, to, which would then walk the hierarchy of security permissions. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. So yeah, so if you have an Azure AD um, security group, you could just drop in that AD group in here. But you know, like how we have the flow doing that check, this won't work. It would run fine, but it would just not result anything because it doesn't know how to read through the users within that AD group um, because it's nested within the SharePoint group. So for that, there is another workaround for that. Um, and I, you know, uh, you, 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 you use the same HTTP request, but it's just a different call that you'll have to make to make sure that uh, you're able to determine if the user is part of an AD group nested inside of a SharePoint group. Okay. But it's possible, yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Anything I can help with? Neil, could you mute yourself? <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought I muted myself. Oh, somebody muted me. So, Gita, how, how would you, because could you use the same process as far as like if you needed to differentiate like who was actually like a team leader that needed to approve or would there be a different route you should go with something like that? Because I get for the admin that might be just a few people, but how would you build in something where let's say I have the crew fill something out, but then needs to go and actually look at leadership as far as certain leadership to approve? Um, there's several ways to do this. Um, um, uh, I think uh, if you want to stick with the SharePoint group way of doing it, uh, yes, you could create a, a an approval leadership SharePoint group, drop in all your uh, approvers in the group, and then follow the same approach to do it. Or you could also maintain a list so that maps to a certain employee. For example, if you have a certain employee, any request that comes from this employee it has to go through, uh, you know, one or two of um, the leads or reviewers. Then you could set up a list, set up that matrix of mapping for each employee, and try and uh, do it that way as well. Can you do anything with an Active Directory? Yes, you can. Yeah, that was uh, very similar to the question that Neil had. Oh, that Neil yeah. was asking. OK, that's yeah. kind of what I thought, but I just wanted yeah. to make sure. Well, another way to do it would also be uh, using Office 365 uh, email enabled groups. So you could create an Office 365 email enabled group. And for that, you don't have to use the flow approach. Uh, you, we have an out of the box Office 365 uh, groups connector within Power Apps. And uh, with that connector, you can make a call to list all the members. So within your app itself, you would just add an act. You would just add that connector, make that call to list all the members, and just filter out by saying, is this user who's logged in part of that group or not? Keith, will you be? Uh, is there a way to put this document into Teams? <clears throat> um, I can share it with you, and if you want to post it in the. Oh, you mean like? Oh, I don't know. I was wondering if uh, you want to post it in your user. There is. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to attach here. 
how would you take this offline and john can you be so, yep yeah. so um i was just thinking if we say have a scenario where we would be when we're connected to sharepoint we want to take down a bunch of you know um cache a bunch of data with us and then take the app offline when we go on the field and you don't have access to the to uh, connect back to internet um and how would that work like just just kind of brainstorm i, I don't know oh that is a great question actually because i can totally see that scenario happening where folks are on the field or site visits and uh, so we have to think about it we probably have to I wonder if we can uh we can only well if you're an admin we probably can show the rest of the app but if you not if you don't have network connectivity um we'll have to see if there's a way to actually not maybe not show them the admin related screens you have to kind of access be have access to net wi-fi or network where you can do that this is neil you could run the flow assuming at some point you were online you could collect not only the test result but the date timestamp of when the test was run and say it's valid for a certain amount of time mm -hmm. cash, 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 cash. Yeah. yeah so then cash the results sort of treated it like a security token and say okay we checked it at 8 a.m it's good until 5 p.m that's right that somebody can actually access it yep that's a great idea may not pass security audit, mind you, but that's one way of approaching it. Yeah. Hey, John, do you have any um, thoughts on how you would implement that? The the offline? No, I don't have any idea. That's a really good question, actually. So we have one option that you brought up, which, which is a great way to do it. Any other questions for Gita? Could I could I add a suggestion, maybe just an idea? Sure, yeah. Um so in the send HTTP request to yes. SharePoint, yes. uh, we can specify different headers. Okay. One yes. of it is the no uh, the no metadata header. And uh, that will greatly reduce the output of yeah. like the default output from SharePoint is pretty spammy. Like it's right. very nested. Start with the D dot value dot. That is very true. Yes. Crazy thing. Uh, using. Yeah. 
Yeah, using the no metadata, you get pretty much just an array. Uh, right, yeah, and it kind of just, yeah, you just want to see what you want to see. You don't want all the other necessary yeah. chatter on it, so yeah, it definitely makes sense, yeah. I do, thing. I do think um, it's a, it's a, when, when I recommend this to people, it's, there is this, if you're kind of exploring and understanding the JSON, then it makes a lot of sense when it's simpler. But mm -hmm. if you're following a tutorial and now I'm telling you to do a different call, the the object that you're getting back is not matching the, whatever is posted in that tutorial. And I, I do find um, power users could get very confused when yeah. you tell them to, when their their action or their action, yeah, the SharePoint action is no longer returning that structure that they're expecting that right. they see on a, on a, on a blog post. Uh, they get really confused because it says, hey, you say use this path, but it doesn't work at all. Yeah, you know, it's different for me. Um, yeah. So that tip is, that is I don't know whether it's for power user tip or whether it's for, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's. Um, anyway. And I think and that's applicable to any HTTP request call to make, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a great way to reduce all the chatter and you only get back an array and you don't have to parse through all the you know unnecessary JSON objects that you don't really need to. Yes. yes. If you're using pass JSON afterwards, uh, it is a lot yeah. easier as well with pass oh, JSON. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you. That was an awesome tip. Thank you. I probably need to update my blog post now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Gita, do you? Did you have anything else to add to that? Uh, no, I think that is it. I will send you the uh, presentation and send yeah, so that I can add it over you. Definitely do that. OK. Uh, all right, let me share my screen now. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. All right, so I, this was one app which I had built a long way back, uh, kind of a YouTube deck using the YouTube data API. Um, and and um, recently I just was talking to um, Brian, Audrey, and they were like, uh, I mean, why don't you share it? I, I think I had shared it, but there was not a pretty good way for other users to download it and use it um, because of the API key and everything. People are not doing that. So I kind of revamped the app a bit, uh, added some things and removed some things and tried to make it look more cleaner and more easier for users to download and use it. And I'll be sharing those links here as well. Um, but yeah, before I kind of show the demo, I just want to uh, kind of how am I getting the data in the, the app, and I'll show you that. But that's basically flow HTTP request. I, I'm not using any connectors or anything, but um, just uh, an HTTP request with a Google YouTube data API, getting some channel details, video details. It's just showing in my power app. So my presentation doesn't have much. <laughs> so I'll get down to the demo. Uh, how do I change my screens here? Let's see. Mm. Okay. All right, are you guys seeing the, the power app? Okay. So as you can see, it's kind of full send all the, the, the recent videos of uh, the channels that I've added in my favorites. So let me show. So this is like a favorites. Uh, 
Uh, Shane Young is definitely ruling everyone. He's uh, he's above all people. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, this I kind of sorted it by the number of views, uh, just to kind of get some stats, uh, overall stats, um, and then. In, so that's my favorites, and I'll show you how to add. Wait, is that, audience, yeah. is that 2.1 million views? I'm sorry, I just I just need to stop and read that for a second. Okay, just thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> show off. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the settings kind of tab has the key. I, I, I still haven't deactivated this key, so still people can use it. And I mean, it, I know people aren't going to use it that much that it will. I haven't put my credit card yet on that, so feel free to use it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it kind of shows you how to get an API key uh, on YouTube, that Google uh, Cloud con Console. Um, so it kind of shows the steps. It's not the best resolution because Power Apps, it seems, destroys the resolution of images when you put them. Um, and so, so let me show you how this kind of the favorites thing works. So this search for channels here. If I let's say search Power Apps, click on search. There you go. So it shows up the list of uh, channels. Um, which matches that keyword, and then I can add it to favorites. Or if it's already in my favorites, it shows that it's already there, and I cannot. I mean, so it can't add it again, basically. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how you get the channels. Then this power up. I mean, the the video itself is um, how to say the video is through a different HTTP request, so you can get the video for one channel. There's an HTTP request for that. I'll show you all the flows as well. And all this is on, uh, I, I have this on GitHub, so you can download and see how it works. Um, so you can see all the videos here, which were kind of sorted by date. And if I just click on one, it opens in the bigger screen and I can see the video from here itself. One cool thing which you don't see on YouTube uh, itself is the tags that the um, each user is using with it. So it's it's kind of public data. So if you use the data API, you can get all the tags, uh, but YouTube doesn't show it on the the website itself. So the one thing which you could do, and which I've added here, uh, um, yeah. So here in tags, I can I've added all the tags into like one table and sorted it by the the number of times it was used. So you see Power Apps is the most used tag. Microsoft Power Apps, SharePoint, Office 365, and now let's say so John Levick. I mean <laughs> he just puts his name and Microsoft with it. So this kind of gives you an idea of what tags also people use. And plus let's say I just want to see uh, Let's see if I want to see okay, something specific I'm trying to look for here. That's a Microsoft graph. Let's select that. Then uh, it kind of, see, see I'm, I'm seeing only videos where people have used the tag Microsoft graph. So yeah, that's, and then the refresh feed is basically a brief if the time when you use opening this app and there's somebody who posted a video, if you want to uh, refresh the feed, you can just click on refresh feed and it gets all the videos from all the channels again, the recent 20 videos and shows it. Um, so let me show the flows here. Any questions so far? Nope, let's see anybody on the chat. Okay. Um, so the one, the first, uh, let's see, the the get channels. Um, so this is my flow that I'm using to get all the channels based on the search query. Um, so if you see here, this is my get request. Um, the 
uh, Q as my search query. And uh, here's where I'm specifying the key from Power Apps. Um, and I'll, I'll show for one of these how the YouTube kind of shows these things on their documentation. Um, and I mean, if you try one API, you basically can kind of explore any other API then because it's basically you define the request and you define and you see what JSON you get out of it, which Shane doesn't believe it's a table. Nope. <laughs> it's coding. <laughs> uh but yeah um so this kind of tells you the how to form the request so um if you see on the left hand side it gives you all the different kind of requests that you can send to this api and get the details and uh, the one which i'm using now is the channels list uh so this one is kind of getting the list of channels um, you can specify what all details you want about the channel. So I have used the snippet and statistics. Um, there is a YouTube, oh, sorry, a Google API Explorer. Um, you can put over here as well, but there is, uh, let me try to see if I can pull that. Google API Explorer. It has basically all the Google APIs and you can kind of play with it without actually having a key. Uh, so you can, and I'll show you how YouTube kind of shows. It takes like a few seconds to load here. Mm, like a while it loads. And it slowed down my system. Okay. So I've, I've asked for snippet and statistics, and uh, if you see my query here, uh, yep, snippet statistics because I want uh, the details of the channel and some stats around that so so that I can see Shane's 2 million views. Um, and then the response is basically giving it back to Power Apps. So there are two ways to send it back. You might, if you have not used this a lot, somebody just joined. Oh, here. Oh, okay, thanks, Shane. Um, so you can, so one is kind of respond to Power Apps, but that doesn't have options to send back JSON and in a table format. So you use this response request action. And within that response request, what I'm sending is, let me actually run, it would have run actually here and we can show you. So, the HTTP get request that I sent over here with my key and the search query we just did. Uh, where is the search query? That's strange. Get channel details. I'm sorry, I, I might be going. Oh, sorry, I have to get channels one. Yeah, so sorry, this one is for searching. I was showing you the channel. So YouTube has different ways to kind of search for channels. So this one, the list channels, you have to give the, the ID of the channel, but to find out the ID of the channel, you need to use the search um, option. So the search and list. So this is the one where you can search for anything in YouTube and you can define the query and you can define what do you want to be searched do you want to search for a video do you want to search for a channel all that is defined over here so let me go back here so yeah i, I defined the search my query we use power apps um and the type so i wanted to search on the channel so i use type equal to channels um and then this is what the response that, that i got and it's a huge response, but what you can do is you can just, you need to find this items, like every API will basically kind of give the response back in an array, in most of the cases, which is your table. And you want to copy it from the square brackets 
to the end of the square brackets. Uh, there are a lot of videos on how to send this back. I mean, send data back to our apps from Flow and how to do copy this JSON and all that stuff. So I won't go into details, but that's your items and that's what I'm sending back to Power Apps. Uh, okay, um, any questions so far on this one? Let's see. John says he lost the steps to configure. Yeah, uh, I wanted to make it user friendly. So how to get the API key is one of the things which people wouldn't go any further to get the API key if they don't know how to do it. So I just put it in the app. Um, well, I think you did a nice little job there, right? You, you definitely earned the title of API guy. <laughs> so I mean, Thanks. if Geetha was messing with your, your space, you might have a talk with her, right? She was kind of... Uh... <laughs> well, there can be a that API goal, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I support this idea. There's always room for that, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I feel so okay. behind. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, I said I just feel so behind. That's <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you have a very conservative corporation. So. Mm. Mm hmm. See, I mean, HTTP request. I, I mean, I know I kind of stopped making a lot of API stuff uh, recently content wise because all this goes under P2 license now. Um, so some people are kind of stepping back, but um, if, if you want to play around with things before, you always have a community plan which you can sign up for and do or use all the premium connectors and CDS and everything and just play around with things before you want your organization to sign up for it. And, and I think even if your organization does sign up for it, I mean, if, if most of your apps are, sorry, flows are triggered from SharePoint or, you know, you can yeah. use a service account, so you're not paying for every user. Yeah. I'm talking about it's external really APIs, bad. yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's you know, really deemed by the licensing. Yeah. Service. Minimize it if you need it too, but yeah. yeah. So, sorry. Oh, I'm done. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so, Craig, I just pasted in the chat. So, one of the things I always recommend to people in your space, especially, is if you go sign up for an Office 365 developer license, mm -hmm. then you just have your own Office 365 yeah. tenant for everything. It's free, it's for a whole year. And I think that's a great way for someone like you that IT or way, you know, locks you out of everything. That way you can get into everything because a lot of times what you have to do is have to go figure it out in your little private world. So you can go back to IT and ask a very specific, will you turn on this button on this screen, right? Because now you're speaking to a spot of education instead of saying, hey, this doesn't work. Will you look into it? And they won't. But if you can point at them and say, look, I've, I've set it up. All I need you to do is click this button and this button and I can do what I need. They won't know what it does. They won't mess with it, and they'll give you what you want. That that's the key for guys like you getting more power. Yeah, and I didn't do the dev. I actually went ahead and just did my own business account, so I could just get in there because there are some things with dev that pretty much needed like the work email address and all that jazz, and it wasn't that wasn't flying at the time. So I had to just purchase my own business account. So I do have all the bells and whistles. It's just finding out soon what uh company's going to turn off and turn on that's yeah. so i get to play with all of it but doesn't mean i'm going to get to play with all of it at work <laughs> <laughs> well so one of the things um so i went up to uh one of the big pharmaceutical companies right because clearly you work for somebody big and giant right so i went to one of those and they were having the same problem but what they really did was the the business group i was working with they just took the world by the horns and started wagging the dog, right? So instead of letting IT kind of do to them, they went and did all the homework, did all the research. And so they were able to go to IT with specific requests and speak from a spot of education. It turns out that IT folded pretty quickly when, you know, organized people, well, an organized group showed up and said, here's what we need to do our jobs and here's why we need it. And so, I don't know, I just, I guess, you know, that's part of the whole business user uh, citizen yeah. developer mentality right you just gotta you gotta go try to wag the dog see if you can right? well, i think people are lazy if, 
Can you do all the work I, for us IT folks? We like to like to you know get yeah. you out of our office quickly. Trust me, I I have one guy that uh, we we've been going back and forth. That's been running the whole migration, and I've been tied with what our little group's called Digital Workplace. That's actually dealing with everything in the suite of Office 365 and SharePoint. So, yeah, I've been already plugging like I need some control and governance. I need basically power apps and flow, which been just informed that we get to actually that is going to be our phone builder. So I just got to continue to tell them like, look, you just can't turn things off in there, though, because I need to be able to still do things in there. Um, so to basically build everything, what I'm already building in InfoPath. So, yeah, I trust me, I've been uh, plugging away. It's just uh, we got a lot of hoops to go through and we got to be FINRA compliant and everything else. So gotcha. Hey, hey, Craig, I don't know if this will be helpful or not, but I know we had that same problem in our company. And uh, like Shane said, I'm lazy in IT. So <laughs> if I can have them do a lot. So we created a thing called Turner. We created a thing called a garage. So basically it, it, this tenant gets everything in targeted release. It gets everything early and we push it out to our users and tell them to go in and test anything, build it however you want, you know, break it, do whatever you got to do. And then if it's good, we'll, move it over to production. Um, that's helped out a lot with people testing out, you know, new power apps, new flows and stuff like that. So I'm, I don't know if that will help you or not to take back to your IT guys. Yeah, just as of today, I just got an actual like test uh, modern uh, site to play with. So um, everything else isn't migrating over our old stuff until like in the closer to the end of this year in, in early 2020 but finally at least i got a uh, internal site to play with to see like what they all turned off compared to like what i can do at home but power apps and flow that portion's probably not coming until uh probably not for another like three months is my guess And then Shane, I finally put two and two together. So I have watched some of your videos. So, <laughs> well, th thank you. I guess um, I so right. The, the the big the running joke is that no one's ever built a power app without watching one of my videos. So I just assume that everyone is at some point put up with my crap. So <laughs> I, I built so, a power app without watching your video, Shane. No way. I, I think what he was showing us, he's just stalking you. <laughs> That's how that's how I first learned about Vivek is he did uh, he well, the first time he talked about this app like two years ago or a year and a half ago or whatever right there's my beautiful face I'm like oh man this guy this guy knows what he's doing he's selling his his content using my face so I had to go find out who this guy was yeah uh -huh. <laughs> look at Vivek he's like oh, I, I hate you uh -huh. <laughs> I mean I, I was promoting you Shane I was just trying to get you more views yeah appreciate it yeah. All right. So, see, so yeah, I mean, um, I don't want to go into each of the flows. Uh, it's basically kind of sending the HTTP request and to different kind of uh, endpoints within this API and getting those details. Um, so the three things that I'm doing is I'll show the collections over here. Um, so my collections are basically the video collection, which has uh, all the video data, so the content details, IDs, some st statistics about that video, the view count, likes, and all that stuff. There's a channels list, um, which I guess uh, it's a temporary. So every time I kind of search for a channel, it kind of it, it kind of clears out. And then all the tags and stuff, tags count. This is so there was a lot of kind of <laughs> compi kind of combining all the tags into one table and doing the count of those tags that that required some some kind of <laughs> next level thing. I was I was almost kind of giving it up, but then it somehow worked out. So all this is available in the app. Just try to uh, see and I have, I've tried to put as many comments as I can, but still I'm not the best kind of beautiful app maker like that. And that's uh, 
that's kind of uh, it. I mean, there's I think more in the video as such. Um, I mean, the app. Uh, let's see if any comments. Rodney, very nice app. Thanks. Uh, all right. I also like like how you had the, there was a drop down which had the buttons with like a custom um, for adding the channels, I think. Adding the channels in here. Yes, I think when you search for it, I think that's a, that's a cool Microsoft flow. No. no, there was a drop down like you were. Yeah, right there where you can favorite it. Yep. It's a cool tip. Efficient use of space and. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. You need to get a bit. I mean, I think when you start building more apps, it's like some ideas come to you. Like, okay, yeah, why can't I just put a button and. Yeah. And yeah. Um, one of the resources, if if you guys, I mean, Shane doesn't like making uh, nice looking apps, but if if you are interested in that, there's a iconfinder.com where you can search for icons let's say link um and then there's a like a free and then you know and there's a i just clicked on something else uh, but there was an option to kind of have no link back to that um uh, so let's see so price free and then license type you don't need to give any link back. So that way you can use all these icons in your apps without giving any attribution to anyone. And there are some nicer icons here uh, apart from what we have in Power Apps. And you can kind of click on the SVG or I mean, actually you can click on icon editor and then you can change the color of it and everything and save it as SVG or PNG or any size and format. So it's pretty, uh, robust that way so that you can you know, create your own icons. I really hope they bring in the office um, icons into Power Up. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. So, the question. Yeah. Can, sorry, can I bolt on to what you just did there? I know that you were making fun of me in the process, but there's also a site called Loading.io. Loading uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. That's and so I've been using that to get free loading uh, animation. So like on apps where I have, you know, it takes a really long time to save the data, like I'm patching a whole bunch of records or fetching stuff. I've been going out here because you can, for free, if it ever, if it's a terrible uh, thing ever loads. So you can build a, a whole bunch of these loading icons for free and then um, you can download them. And so then I'm just, you know, having basically uh, show loading icon variables set to true, it pops up, then I'm doing all my patching and then set it to false when it comes back making pretty apps, which Vivek does not believe I know how to do. <laughs> you only told me, Shane, you don't like making pretty apps. You don't get paid well, for making pretty apps. So. I don't. I do not like pretty. But every now and then, Vivek customers make me do it. It, it, it hurts me on the inside. I charge them double for it. But <laughs> uh, Vivek. Okay, Neil, you had a question. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just waiting for the conversation to pause for a moment. Um, have you ever uh, used uh, Azure's Key Vault to store your API keys and used Power Apps to dynamically call it? Because I think there, that I I was thinking there was going to be a connector for the Key Vault that might be a standard license. Yeah, have they you, did release a Key Vault connector. Actually, they did. Yes, it's, it's actually Azure out. Key Vault. Yeah, so they have a connector for Azure Key Vault. It, it, I think they just released it like a couple of weeks back it's pretty recent hmm i i didn't know that i'm gonna I'm gonna look into that so thank you for showing this to me yeah but but, but he's right in in, his, uh, in that that it would be best practice right so well but it was also i was thinking in general for when you're trying to uh, uh in sharing apps that have uh api keys if instead you said okay well you would personalize your access to your own key vault, and then here's the name I want you to store your key in. Then mm -hmm. you could more generalize the samples. I think. No, 
Is this kind of free to access or does it come with your tenant or what do you know anything about that? Uh, no, yeah, I know. Uh, so so Key Vault is a, um, uh, a, a, a secure encrypted storage mechanism mm -hmm. for keeping your secrets. And uh, the cost per month is pretty small. It, it's like more of a cost per access request. Okay. So um, it's typically, you know, unless you're fairly large, if for us, for the kind of stuff that you guys have been for as far as for demoing, you're probably talking about three to ten cents a, a month per per app. Um, if you're doing a couple hundred to a couple thousand authentication requests. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, and it kind of uses uh, like a key value pair, so you just choose mm. the connector for passing your key. Yeah, yeah it's, sort of, it's sort of like the Windows Credential Manager, um, but cloud-based. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if there's already a connection to it, that that's a that's a good one. Then you don't need to create an API for that as well. So that's good. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, I haven't used it. I'll, I'll give it a shot. And yeah, I, I just keep it. I, I sometimes just keep the key in my app um, because some of them are open. A I mean, YouTube one is not, but I, some, I sometimes build apps which use open APIs. So I don't have to kind of, I mean, there, there are no keys actually for it. And sometimes they don't have any kind of limits as such because as soon as I tell them one more step to do for downloading and Trying that app, they're like, mm, I'm, I'm probably not going to do that step. So, but yeah, that's a good point for, for me. I, I guess I, I might use it uh, to store my keys and stuff. Yeah, for somebody to just try out something, they might not do that. Yeah, no, uh, yes, yeah, it was just more. It, no, it, obviously, you don't you don't want to give us our keys for things that you do pay for, right? Yep. So, um, yep. that might be a way. Of, and like I said, I, it was more. Has anyone used it? Um, I mm -hmm. started to poke it. I was getting ready to start poking at it next week. Is my plan, but okay. I hadn't actually started with it. So I was just anyone had any expertise with it, and I figured you would probably be one of the first people. <laughs> in there. Uh, I do. I do a lot of API stuff. I'm still not. I don't have that background in API. It's just something I'll. I'll oh, find here it is. Data with, yeah. I found it. Um, okay. Uh, any other questions on this one? Uh, I already placed. Oh, okay. The the connector. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Any other questions on this one? Uh, I do have the the link. Let me just share the links here in the the GitHub link to. Yep. Mm. I have my app here, which you can download. It, the flows get downloaded automatically with the uh, Power App itself, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so yeah, give it a shot. And uh, so one of the use cases which I when I posted about this was using it in educational fields where you or any kind of you want to build a learning path uh, for your users where you want YouTube videos but you don't want to see them videos on YouTube because they might start doing something else. So, so if you want to just show that one video, you can use this so that they don't see any other videos. You can kind of create a learning path over here. Um, there's a nice Champify app on the Community Apps Gallery, um, which has the same approach. But I think they are using videos um, not from YouTube, but some somewhere else. Um, let me see if I can pull that quickly. Um, but yeah, they have like a score leaderboard and uh, like users can select the level of courses and stuff. It's basically an app to, uh, let's see if we can find that. Champify features. Oh, there you go. So this one was actually gone by Microsoft themselves. So you can see over here, it's uh, you can kind of 
create a whole you know, learning path. And I mean, I, I think these videos were from their own kind of resource. You can, so, but if you want to use YouTube videos instead, uh, you can kind of create that path and uh, just restrict your users to that. Let them focus on those videos only, and not anything else. Yeah, just a use case to share. Any other questions? Can you even do something similar to this with Stream? Stream. Um, I don't know. Stream does it connect to Power Apps today? Like, is there any? We have a connector for Streams today. Um. I'm not sure if stream videos show up on Power Apps. I mean, I haven't tried that yet. So, so stream does not have an API. So, no API, no connectors. I fight with them privately, and now I fight with them openly. <laughs> don't have Go, John. <laughs> I I have Office 365 videos, which has an API and a connector. And I just want to migrate them all off and then go into stream and then turn them all off. But I can't. Uh, we'll you know, just wait, I guess then. So maybe one day. <laughs> yeah, one day. Yeah, one day. <laughs> OK. Um, any, anything else that people want to know about Bar Apps Flow? We have Shane, we have Keita, we have John. So any questions, anything that you, just an AMA? Like, I, ask I have a, I have a, a challenge that I haven't been able to solve in Flow, if I could ask it. Go ahead. Okay, so um, one of our groups, um, they manage contracts. And so what they want to do is uh, use a SharePoint list, put in the contracts, and they have a termination date for when the contract ends. Um, and so what they would like to do is um, 90 days before that termination date, um, send a notification to somebody to say, hey, this contract's going to end. Um, you might need to, to do something. Do that 90 days and then turn around, do it 60 days and then turn around, do it 30 days. So I've and then also in this SharePoint list, if, if there's items in there that say okay, do not renew, you know, hit yes. Um, or renew on hold, don't don't send the emails if these two equal yes. So what I thought I, I would do was use conditions. Um, so I have it, and they're all nested conditions, but what's happening is, is that, let's say there's seven items entered in. You know, one of those items is set to not renew, so it'll get bypassed, but it's sending the email six times because it's, and it's, I mean, it's working the way I have it built, but I, I don't, know how to make it stop sending the six emails um, because it'll check the first condition and then run through but then come back again and check it again so it's like running seven times and sending out six emails hopefully that makes sense it it makes sense if you look at it but i'm i guess my question is is maybe that's not the right way to do this use nested conditions um, maybe there's a different way I can I can build this flow, and I'm having a challenge trying to think of it. This is Neil. Have you tried reversing your conditional tests? Test for your shortest condition first. If pass, then end. Then test for your test for 30 days. If you hit 30 days, send the mail and then end. If you don't, test for 60 days, send your mail and end. R rather than going the other direction where you hit every condition. Well, what, what 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 I think is causing my issue is that because I have the, I think I had it working before I added in the new conditions of, it's if it's uh, if they don't want to renew it, it you know, hit yes, adding in those new conditions, it it added that issue. I mean, I can try that. I can try reversing it. But if I, I wouldn't nest these right. So I would, would I put in like an end flow terminate or just end it, and then have an so I guess obviously I would put a maybe a canceled flow. You can terminate with success within flow versus terminate with error. I'm... Okay, I can try that. Okay. Says, 
Yeah. So yeah, Eric, I don't know if you're reading the chat, but it says don't remember with cancel flow things. That's not success. And you get an email a week later. Um, I'll post something. If this doesn't work, I'll, I can post a screenshot in the the Cincinnati user group. Just kind of what. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, uh, you can take that. Yep. Okay. Any any other any other pains anyone has? Anyone's trying to solve something with Power Apps Flow? Has uh, anyone used components yet in Power Apps? No. I haven't did a whole video on it. Yeah, I was just gonna say if you haven't, watch Shane Young's video. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> Plug. <laughs> now, components are I so components, you know, I, I was kind of like meh at first, honestly. And then I started playing with them and I've kind of I kind of started digging on them. Mm. And so then I started building a new customers app and I'm like, well, I wanna um uh, use components and they're still experimental so you can't yeah. so that was like that was like nah, I, I I want to jump in here yeah so I hope they, they bring they make it GA soon yeah and yeah that, and there's just a bunch of little pieces I guess yeah I mean there's a lot like you can just create you can almost create like uh, templates of apps and with these components, it's basically you give a nicer drag and drop. I mean, especially for some, like uh, as a company, like I, I don't work for different companies, but I'm just working, making part of my own company. Um, but we can kind of have a whole template and some components that people can add. And it's basically giving them a nicer drag and drop option and, some ready to use items which are not available in Power Apps Studio as such. And yeah. that's the first thing that they ask when they start building an app. Like, can I do this? Yes, you can, but you need to spend some more time on it or, or otherwise I need to create a component for you. Yeah. Yeah, and John said, you know, can they go inside of galleries? No, they still aren't supported inside of galleries, which is, is annoying. Um, there's also a bunch of weird things around the way they work with variables and collections that'll, mm -hmm. some of that'll change. Some of that'll just always be weird, I think. So I actually have a meeting with somebody It's supposed to be right now. And I, I skipped it to be here, but I have a meeting tomorrow with somebody to kind of talk about some of the things that I think it does a little weird. So, mm. um, yeah. If my memory is correct, these are the ones where basically we can build the components and then those components we can like use over and over, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, just I did, for an example, I think like about this menu that I'm having over here. And just, so this could be a component and you can keep using it. You can define the color and stuff and the user can change that based on whatever app they're using. So, yeah. Yeah, I did like that because it's having to do it over and over and over again. We're talking about building games. Uh, I guess Brian Tang is the, the resource for that. <laughs> Just watches videos, watches uh, live sessions. He has a bunch of knowledge on how to create awesomely, I mean, amazingly. How would I say that? But he uses tables and kind of the the whole grids and stuff, toggles. I I I can't do all that. Yeah, he does a lot of like workarounds and hacks to actually give that smooth gaming experience, yeah. which is pretty awesome. He he built that Pokemon Go. Oh yeah, Power and that too when Power Up was just launched. Yeah, it just started. Yeah. So yeah, I mean I don't know how he does that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I wouldn't, I mean, are there any other questions? I don't want to keep people the whole day. Just there. Uh, anything else that you want to learn about Power Apps or Flow? Any new features that you are curious about? Uh, 
um, there's a question. I'll just from... come back in May and be ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> a... Sorry, Gita, you were saying something? There's a question from Rodney. But I need to find a good way to do versioning with components. Uh... So if your component is part of your Power App, it is already version enabled, right? Yeah, and you can export your components. So that would be, I guess, the closest thing you could offer your Rodney, right? Would be to go in and uh, you know build it and then export the file off. Uh, but yeah, that's that's kludgy. So I then have a power app with all your components listed and just keep saying the versions of it. Yeah, but components, right? Don't reference other or doesn't reference components in other apps, right? So if you yeah. You'd have to like copy it in and out. Yeah, and there's a there's a bunch of these little nuances that they know they gotta get sorted before it goes GA. So yeah, I think they're working on kind of because that's that's one of the piece which kind of how do I use components across apps easily, right? I mean, importing, exporting, and basically. If you change a component in one app, it's not like it's going to reflect in the other app. Um, so yeah, th there's going to be a lot of other things that get added to it before it finally goes to you. Okay. Hey, is the um, May um, meeting, is that going to be on the 9th? Let's see. Yes, 9th. Uh, now that one. I, I mean, I'll be doing that from Cincinnati, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep this uh, access because I think it's it definitely I saw a good kind of discussion today. So we'll keep the, the option to join via Teams. Um, I'll, but I mean, I, I just make it more like you need to request for it before I give it. I just don't want to give everyone that option and not come up with that Cincinnati. So. Just give give me an, uh, a message or email and I'll send it to you. OK. Yeah, I, I think that one I might not be able to do because I'll be actually in Pennsylvania. So that week. Um, so I just wanted to double check because okay. I definitely enjoyed this and I'll definitely be want to keep this up because, like I said, I'm in the other SharePoint user group for Cincinnati and both both this and that has been very helpful. Yeah, cool. Yeah, good, good feedback. Thank you for joining. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Shane, are you or any of you guys going to be and gals going to be at the SharePoint conference in Vegas? So in SharePoint conference, I'll be there. I'm doing a pre day on SharePoint stuff. Boo. Um, so I'll be there just for that. Um, but yeah. OK. And uh, I mean, that's before we kind of close. Uh, yeah. Which day is that going to be on chain that you'll be there? Uh, Monday the 20th. 20th, okay. So if you get in on, the, I don't know what day you're getting in, but if you get there, you definitely come find me, say hello. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll be there. I fly in on Saturday because I'll be there for the workshops, the whole gig. So. Oh, what workshop are you doing on Monday? Uh, let's see, on the Monday... It might be Ben's. Forget when Ben's is. It's either that Sunday or Monday, and then the other one I think is uh, Sue's. Cool. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly add Geeta's presentation on this so that people can download and use it. Um, just give me a second. And then I'm not sure if you'll be, let's see if Teams allows that. We all hear you thinking and clicking, but have no idea what you're doing, so. Did you, did, did, okay, it's, it's uploading. Uh, I was just seeing uh, this kind of Power Platform Summit um, because we are doing a Power Apps UG. 
says plugging in the events conferences coming up this one is in october i guess in orlando if i'm not wrong uh, mm, that sounds nice oh look at that australia john there you go yep so australia 21st 23rd august uh okay. and this one is october 14 uh, 15 to 18 and pre-conference act week 13 to 15. And if you register by June 27, you save 500. So I don't know. I mean, if people, if you're interested, yeah. And I, I don't know if you guys get that, but I think they they have a um, a call for speakers also open. And I think the deadline is tomorrow or something. Oh, I don't think I knew anything about that. So is this an email or how do you? They sent me, I mean, Sue or one of those, uh, Sue or who's the other, Rose. They send out emails. I don't know if this, they send out only to people who register as a, like, you have to register yourself as something. They, like you are as a volunteer or something, and then they send oh. it to you. They yeah, have, play around with the site, register yourself as a volunteer if you are interested in speaking. Uh, and they send it out. They send out these emails requesting to, or kind of call for speakers. So I'm I'm surprised, Shane. You didn't know about this. I mean, she emails me every day about something else. I guess I just uh, <laughs> I'm I'm about. That's what I was actually looking for. Uh, probably start with Rose and just be like, "Sup, dog." <laughs> you see your kid over there. Yeah. Luke, okay, everybody can see you, so you might as well stick your head all the way in here. <laughs> hello. <laughs> they say hello. He says nothing. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, if there isn't anything else, uh, we'll um, have a next session on 9th May. And uh, hope we see you guys again over there. Thank you for joining. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Fifik, you left the meeting without stopping the recording. So I am leaving you an extra message at the end of your video. Bye. Aww.